you really like to just zoom through maps very quickly, I got the build guide for you. Hey, I'm Cyclin. Today I want to share with you my League Start build, my variant of the Lightning Arrow Deadeye. Now, as far as I've seen, there's a very big attention to this build this league, so some of the uniques and crafted rares for this build might be expensive. This build guide will include a POB that includes all the way starting from the low end with no investment, scaling all the way to a high end looking including mage blood and merit items. I don't expect anybody to, that plays this build to get to the end game stages of the build, I just included this for those that do want to reach it. For covering in this video I will be the pre-crit swap stages as well or the pre-crit swap pre-crit swap uh, mapping stage as well as a post-crit swap mapping stage and the end game I will cover in a separate video as well as how you can craft all the gear that will be in this POB for the later stages and I will also make a separate video how you can efficiently level this build and all the tiny things that you can note or that are going to make your leveling experience or your campaign experience a bit easier. I do apologize that for the late upload, for the that everything is going to be pushed towards the end of the last few days before launch. I did got sick, I wasn't able to record properly, I wasn't able to talk properly. Hopefully everything will still reach you in time so you can have a decent league launch. Alright, that out of the way, let's take a look at this POV. Now one final thing before I'm going to start with the actual guide. I will be trying to live stream on Twitch on League Start. If you have any questions or just want to look how I'm doing with the build or just want to chat, feel free to join. Alright, now, the first big question is why are we a dead eye? Why aren't we a radar? Isn't radar way better at League Start? Isn't radar faster at League Start? Well, no. This is a quick answer. The more detailed answer is radar gives us a few interesting things. Radar gives us spell suppression or easier spell suppression cap. But we don't really need it. In the very early stages, we don't really care about spell uh, We don't really care about elemental avoidance. If I said spell suppression, I meant elemental avoidance for now. Spell suppression we get to in a moment. We don't really need elemental avoidance cap early on. We can just get the Pantheon for freeze immunity and otherwise we're gonna be fine. When we do need it and we just feel more comfortable with it, we can just use priority of elements as one of our defensive auras. And if we don't need it early on, later on we can use something like Storm Shroud, Ancestral Vision, crafting it on our boots, getting it on body armor. There's, uh, there are easy ways to get spell suppression once we do some investment into the build. So we don't really need Avatar of the Rail for spell suppression. Then, oh, what about uh, Elemental Voids? Now we get the spell suppression. Then what about Quartz Infusion for Spell Suppression? Well, we can get fully capped on Spell Suppression with our passive tree and that is already incorporated into the build. We can get Inveterate, we can get Entrench and one additional Spell Suppression node there as well as getting Quickstep plus the two small nodes and Intuition on top of I think it was one Nevermind, no Spell Suppression on the gear and we are fully Spell Suppression capped. So we don't need those not on Raider either, but some people might say Raider is faster. Well, Raider has some onslaught, which of course is a nice attack and movement speed, but we can get Tailwind, which is as good honestly. So now we already have equal the Raider Ascendancy, but we still have three Ascendancy nodes. So what we can get? Well, we can get far Shot, massive damage boost, we can get Endless Munition, quality of life, clear boost, and single target boost because of how artillery ballista works. And then finally, of course, we have focal point just for great damage increase. By the way, that's also our sense order, but I will get to that in a bit slower in a moment. So the dead eye just have so much more than a radar to offer for a bow build, for an elemental bow build. It's just a really great ascendancy. So before we're going to take again a quick more slower look at why dead what essentially notes we want to take when on Deadeye very quickly. The defensive layers of this build. Early on we're looking at Grace, Spell Suppression and Leech. Then we can add determination to it, being a bit more tanky, being a bit more careful, getting some XP. And once we're good enough on XP and we're moving towards higher level, we can completely drop Grace and Determination and use a very unique defensive layer being purely damage mitigation. 
getting berserk, getting petrified blood, getting progenesis, all mitigating damage, delaying it, and because we have leech and instant leech, anything that isn't one-shotting us isn't killing us at all. And if we get one-shotted, well, we would have gotten one-shotted probably in the with grace and determination anyway. So overall, we can have great survivability layers at any point of the game. If we want to focus on XP, playing more carefully, we can adjust for that. If we want to just blast maps, be very quick, we can do that too. It's a wonderful build for any mapping leak mechanic. Alright, now we get to the more problematic part, which is bossing. How do we do single target? Well, first off, what kind of bossing can we actually do? We have not really big issues, but somewhat issues with the quest boss. It can kill the quest bosses by any means. It's, it's actually doable for the quest bosses. It won't be comparable to a bosser though. If you are taking a more comfortable approach to the league start, you maybe hit red maps between day 3 and day, I don't know, day 10 whatever your speed is or maybe even later the best thing you can do is either first farm a bit of currency get better gear and then do the bossing in your trade league or you could just get a boss killer for you to kill the boss for you and then you have your void stones and you don't even, even need to care about the boss but of course some people want to kill the bosses themselves and that is doable on this build as long as you know what you're doing you need to know how the boss is doing the damages and what you need to dodge and what you need to and how you can dodge it. And then you are going to be completely fine on seeing Exile, Eat of Roads, the Black Star, and then the Endless Hunger, or whatever that guy is named. Even Maven is doable on this build. It won't, again, not be as fast as a bosser, but it can do those boss fights to get your Void Stones, and then you are good to go. However, in terms of mapping, wonderful build. Really fast, but mapping Lightning Arrow was already clear that it's a really great build. Now, in terms of how to get your single target, it's the simple terms is place your totems, stand far away from the boss, and shoot. The more complicated way to put it is by shooting, you trigger mana forged arrows for frenzy, getting frenzy, and later on power charges. You apply your staffers mark automatically to the boss. Every few hits, you apply your elemental mastery, inverting the en enemy resistances for this hit, meaning this hit will deal massive amounts of damage so over time equaling out with the hits that don't do and then again just utilizing far shot with your artillery ballast as you placed and with you standing away from the boss roughly keeping the boss at the edge of your screen maximizes the damage and you're good to go so this is a more complex way how you do a single target but again very simple you stand far away from the boss you place your totems you shoot at the boss the boss will die eventually of course bigger bosses take longer time to die but they will die eventually. Now with those defensive and how we do our damage, let's take a, finally a look at our Sensi, how we want to do this. Well, our Sensi is the following. We're going to start with Gathering Winds. On our first lap we pick this up, we're going to have a really fun campaign time. Normally I recommend people doing your lap at level 31 when you hit Crystal Cavern Waypoint. For this, you can do it as early as level 29. You are a squishy bow build, so you need to know how to dodge Isario's big attacks so that you don't accidentally die in lab. But if you're comfortable with that, or if you have a buddy that maybe can help with your lab, you're good to go. Do the lab as early as level 29 when you or when you get the um, the final lab node in the Imperial Garden. And you're good to go to do your first lap, get Tailwind, and you're going to zoom through the rest of the campaign. Once you're level 55, you get a next really big. I recommend doing this one slightly later because of, again, your bowl build, your bit squishy. They're going to do more damage there. At, I think, roughly end of camp Act 7, starting of Act 8. No, wait, end of Act 8, starting of Act 9, you should get Far Shot. From the second lap, you get access to Far Shot. Now you deal massive amount of damage the further you are away from the enemy. Again, roughly keeping the enemy at the edge of your screen maximizes your damage. On the final lap in the campaign, we're going to pick up Endless Munition, further adding quality of life to our clear, and of course adding single target damage. By the way, Artillery Ballista works. Once you have 6 projectiles, 8 projectiles, and 10 projectiles, Artillery Ballista starts overlapping more and more, increasing the maximum amount of damage that you do with it. And then on the final map, 
uh, on the final lap during maps, you can get access to Focal Point. Focal Point has two great things that is worth noting. First, of course, increases our single target damage, but it also increases our clear. By applying Sniper's Mark automatically on enemies, on rares and on uniques, when we encounter one and we apply a Sniper's Mark and we shoot at it with our Lightning Arrow and hit it, there are going to be more Lightning Arrows spreading out, the Lightning Arrows hit other stuff, the Lightning is going to come down from the sky, hit even more enemies, and it's even a clear improvement. Just a wonderful ascendancy note for our dead I built. As for the rest of our tree, very quickly, pre and post crit, there isn't many difference as you can see here. There is really just, we do some slight changes, we have an inspired learning spot, but the big difference is that we are moving out of precise technique to actually do crit, and we grab the crit nodes like Heartseeker, King of the Hill, Lethality. Those are the main points for getting access to the crit build. So to get into the crit build is actually just a question of how many levels you have, more than how much how good your gear is or whatever thing else. So just already mentioned this now, through swap into the crit version, it's just a question of levels. Eventually we're going to add up on a crit build because crit is just going to be better. So the rest of the tree, what we actually need on it. Well, we have some accuracy to keep our precise technique. We get it from the bow mastery, from the accuracy mastery, from the accessory node. We have some bow damage, or projector damage with long shot. We have additional projectiles. We have some elemental damage. And then we have some quality of life, like preservation efficiency, life, leech, and instant leech, pierce from the tree, uh, spell suppression, and onslaught from the tree. So overall just a really high quality of life build with a decent amount of life and a lot of damage. Well, mapping damage. Once we are in crit, already mentioned, we have some crit nodes and we move out of precise technique. Some other important things to mention on the passive tree is that we have an inspiring learning spot here that we can use early or later on we can use inspired learning spot on the shadow start and of course, in high investment versions of the build, eventually we can fit like a Sweat of Hope or a Brutal Restraint or a Lethal Pride on the passive tree as well. Just wanted to quickly mention that those are considered, those are in the tree. Early on we can fit either Rare Jewels or we can fit like an Incestor Vision or a Storm Shot to get our, spells, uh, our Elemental Voids capped. But yeah, that much for the tree. For our skills. Our skills are the following. Early on we are considered to use lightning arrow or if you do find in wall side areas, wall eye shot, wall lightning arrow, wall rain of arrows. I recommend wall eye shot or lightning arrow but of course if you like rain of arrows it's totally fine as well. This is just a preference and as this is my version I prefer recommending those over rain of arrows. So we have a lightning arrow, we combine it with mirage archer quality of life. A little mental damage with attacks and trinity for damage and if we find an early five link we can add inspiration to it. Our single target is going to be carried by artillery ballista which we can combine with faster attacks and focus ballista to deal a massive amount of damage and of course again elemental damage with attacks because we are an elemental attack build. And again if we find an early five link we can add inspiration here too. We ignore the crit part per inspiration charge, what we're focusing on is the more elemental damage per inspiration charge, which is just adding a decent amount of elemental damage to it. Then for our auras, we have Graves, Herald of Ash, as well as the War Banner. If you're confident on bigger bosses, or if you don't really care about dying too much, or you just have otherwise decent uh, life pool already, you can replace Graves with Anger to do more damage. If you want to level up and focus on level up, stay more safe with Grace and do a little bit less damage and not have Anger in, but it's good to have the option to swap, right? Then we have our automated frenzy via mana forged arrows, early on we have culling strike, later on we're going to get culling strike from our amulet. So we need, don't need culling strike in later stages, once we have the amulet we can drop that. Then we have a sniper's mark on hit, automating the sniper's mark process. And for mobility early on during campaign still we want smoke mines and then we have faster attacks with blink arrow as our instant teleport in case smoke mine has no charges and later on we're going to drop smoke mine to just have blink arrow as faster attacks 
once we are again on the crit squad stage are we getting i assume in you have six links you have optimized gem spots we are looking at something like lightning arrow again mirage archer elemental damage trinity inspiration and then we can add Jane. Sadly, Vengeance Cascade, as well as Returning Projectile, isn't looking too promising. So, Jane looks like to be the go to support again. Of course, if you really liked Returning Projectile, Vengeance Cascade, you can still go with it. Jane will lower your damage of your Lightning most slightly. However, in return, it's going to hit additional enemies. Returning Projectile is not doing anything for the gem, uh, for the Lightning as it goes outwards. But of course, returning will deal 40% damage, so it is more or less a damage increase. Take it as test it out. If it feels good, go ahead and use it. If not, chain is good. Or if you're a fork enjoyer, fork is good as well. For our artillery ballista. Artillery ballista, focus ballista, elemental damage, inspiration. Once you're on crit, increase crit damage. If you're still pre-crit, you can use elemental focus instead. And faster attacks for our six link of choice. Now that we have Culling Strike from our amulet and we are in crit, we want to add Power Charge and crit on our mana, on Mana Forge Frenzy instead. We still have our Sniper's Mark forever for Sniper's Mark. There's a rough calculation. If you 60% of your mana is, of your unreserved mana is enough to cast Sniper's Mark, then you don't need Life Tap. If it isn't, you're going to need Life Tap to guarantee that you use Sniper's Mark when you need it on a bigger boss. So that you just have your sniper's mark up guaranteed when you hit the boss. Then we get to Guardian's Blessing. And now Guardian's Blessing is a new support gem. And the way it seems to look is we have a minion like summon holy relic. Then we have our aura and we have our Guardian's Blessing which sadly isn't in POB yet linked to both. Now while the minion is alive the aura isn't going to reserve anything. And it's going to slowly kill the minion. The reason why we use Summon Holy Relic is the minion regenerates itself when we attack and it's going to give us some life regen which we can further utilize in an item which we get to in a later stage of the build but quick heads up, it's Cairn Spirit, the region we convert into Rage and Rage is awesome because Rage gives us Berserk and Berserk is massive damage and mobility. Then because we are using Anger on the Guardian's Blessing we have access to fit Grace and Determination and then on later stages, I like already mentioned, we want to use Flame Dash instead of Blink Arrow because Flame Dash is a bit more instant and Tailwind makes it feel like it's super instant. And then we have Precision from our Amulet, Hyrus Truth. Now this for our items. So items, I am going to cover the items that I assume you're going to have after you farmed in Red Maps for a bit. Now, depending on your mapping speed, this could be the gear that you have in yellow maps, in red maps, or in higher end red maps. I just recommend to go at your own pace, just because I assume you have this in mid maps, doesn't mean you have to have these in mid maps. If you don't have them, it's nothing wrong with your playstyle. It is just that I'm generalizing what I assume on this stage of the build. I try to keep the cost of this as low as possible for the early stages. However, I do need to note, the taming might be expensive this league. There's a lot of hype about Lightning Arrow, there's a lot of attention to the build. So the taming, a ring that can't be dropped itself and can only be crafted by combining the three barrack rings, can be somewhat expensive. Because there's one ring that is a bit more rare than the rest. So there's going to be more demand than likely supply, especially in early stages. Eventually the ring will lose in value and uh, reduce in price so you can pick it up. But this is just a heads up for this build so nobody can say I didn't want you, this is not leaked up price. Everything else should be very cheap on this stage of the build and this stage of the build will get you to red maps, will be able to kill the bosses again if you know how the bosses work. But yeah, just wanted to mention that. So we starting with a bow, it's just going to be a random tree elemental bow, just high elemental damage as possible and a decent amount of attack speed. Our quiver is going to be a poised prism. Now this one is going to give us a lot of flat damage as well as resistances, really great for early stages. Then we want a body armor with either life, high life, it can be corrupted or not corrupted, or no life. If it has no life, 
we can utilize the life mastery with 15% increased maximum life. Is there no life modifiers in equipped body armor? If it has low life, like 1 life, 10 life, 20 life, we can't use that. So that's why we want to aim for either very high life or no life on our body armor. Then on our helmet, gloves, boots and belt, we're just looking to get our strengths up. We're looking to get a little bit of intelligence, preferable just using an int essence. And then getting, of course, life on all pieces of gear as well as our amulet, our rings and our quiver can't have life due to being uniques that don't have life on them. But that's how we want to stake our early gear. High elemental damage on the bow and then just high life and resistances instead on the rest of the gear. And then getting the damage from our amulet, our rings and our quiver. As for our flask, we want to use a jade quicksilver, silver and sulfur flask early. Once we get into the crit swap, we just replace the sulfur with the diamond flask. And before that, of course, you can already try to craft your flask. I have only um, only crafted my flask in the crafted GG steer stage because I just assumed that this, this the next stage is when you just get step by step all your items crafted. This one is just the least amount of needed to get through the end game. As for our life flask, I prefer a more recovery is used for a low life. We are an instant leech build, we, as long as we don't get one-shotted, our life usually gets up again, however sometimes it does not, so that's why we have a flask as a panic button. With this more recovery as well as corrupted blood and bleeding immunity on our life flask, usually with our leech and instant leech it's going to help us survive anything that isn't a one-shot, and because of us getting hit and of hitting stuff, it lasts a bit longer than just a flux, it instantly sets up to full and then we start losing life again if we are surrounded by a lot of enemies. To note, some uh, in previous iterations of build guides, people got confused by the very expensive jewels that are linked to the gear. The jewels here are on the crit swap stage, so the stage after. These are some of the earlier, more expensive pickups you want to do. But of course, again, by no means are they necessary. You don't need Inspired Learning, you don't need Ancestral Vision. If you can pick them up, great, but Ancestral Vision is something that we want to use in combination with these boots anyway. The boots that already have avoidance on them to add up to our fully avoidance cap. But yeah, looking at this stage, I will make a separate video talking how you can craft all the gear on this. I'm going to go very quickly over the gear that we want to eventually add up on our rare spots. However, I will make a separate video how you can craft all of this gear, hopefully uh, at latest at Friday. So, we still have our tree elemental damage bow, we have a quiver with es that we are going to essence craft, that we are going to have additional bow, bow damage, life, lightning damage, crit multi, but again, how are we going to get there, I will get to in a separate video. Our helmet, we want a tornado shot enchantment because eventually we want to use tornado shot, at least in this iteration of the build. We want to have mana cost, preservation deficiency, spell suppression, life, chaos rest, body armor with spell suppression, life, chaos rest, avoidance, max life and aura effect. We eventually we want to use a camp spirit gloves. We want to have boots with avoidance, chaos rest, life, movement speed. We're still going to use the highest proof at this stage. We're still going to prefer tamings or rearing with minus mana cost, resistances, stats, and life. And then we want again our belt is just to fix our resistances and stats. The elemental damage with attacks is optional, but of course would make the belt a lot better. The flask, we want to focus most of our flasks to be charged when we are getting hit. And we want something like curse effectiveness, movement speed and evasion rating from our flask. Because we are using determination, we could argue to, if you just want to go defensive, instead of utilizing a quicksilver flask because we are already a very fast build, we could argue, okay, we're just going to go with an iron flask, uh, a granite flask, not iron flask, a granite flask with charge on hit and armor instead of movement speed quicksilver flask and keep the silver because it gives us attack speed. And then we want a diamond flask once we are on the crit version and then we prefer the regeneration of life that is uh, to again further improve our rage generation for cam spirit. Our life flask doesn't change at this stage. Of course I also have added the omni swap and the end game gear section however I will not cover these. I will cover these in a later video that I sadly can't promise to get them out pre-launch. 
But yeah, this is mostly our item section. Again, I've made a quick recommendation when to do the specific swaps as well as a detailed leveling section. I will now quickly go over how we're going to do the leveling, but I swear as well I will make a separate video because there are some things that I want to mention that are a bit more detailed and this video is already fairly long and I don't want to just extend this video to be way too long. So very quickly. We're going to start rushing precise technique, we're then going to get onslaught, more damage and more damage. We're then going to get some life and survive a quality of life. And then we're going to finish the tree with additional projectiles, getting PS, then getting more life. And then getting all the rest of the quality of life. And then we are getting our spell suppression and we are on the crit swap stage again. Again, very simple. As for our gems, we're going to start with Caustic Arrow, we're going to add Mirage Archer, on level 12 we add Lightning Arrow, dropping Caustic Arrow, we are going to get a, a Artillery Ballista at level 28, and that is going to be what we use till the end of the campaign and into maps. If you find at any point during leveling a Wall Eye Shot or Wall Lightning Arrow, I heavily recommend using it instead of your normal Lightning Arrow. And also level some lightning arrows in your offhand. And if you find wall ops, wall your lightning arrows to hope to get a wall lightning arrow. Alright, all that being said, hopefully you now have a good league start guide for your lightning arrow build. And had a lot of fun watching this. Or at least it had been informative. All that being said, have a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, there might be another interesting one up in this corner there. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.